Good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for being here today. I'm General Scott Rice, the Emergency Assistance Director, charged with overseeing our emergency shelter operations for the Healy Driscoll Administration and ensuring the safety and well-being of families in Massachusetts. I bring to this position a great deal of experience leading large-scale organizations and emergency response or operations. I've worked for over 30 years in Massachusetts and bring my values and all I've learned to bear in this situation, which is responsiveness, transparency, and a deep commitment to the people of this state. In my new role leading this critical mission, I have been engaged with members of the governor's incident command team, shelter providers, and local officials to get a sense of what their experience and the support they need and how effectively manage this increasing demand and how to effectively manage this increasing demand on our shelter system. I know that communication and partnerships are key in these moments, which is why I am here today. As you know, Massachusetts is in a new phase of this challenge. We do not have enough shelter space, service providers, or funding to continue to safely expand beyond 7,500 families. We expect to reach that limit on Wednesday or Thursday. As of this morning, we are at 7,439 families living in emergency shelters across the state. A reminder of who these families are. The, they are families and expecting moms. More than half of them are children, and they are here lawfully with the knowledge and consent of the federal government. I want to provide a couple of updates as we prepare to meet this moment. First, we are activating more National Guard members to provide basic services at emergency shelter locations. We have been so grateful to the dedicated men and women of the National Guard who have stepped up to help us ensure that every family in emergency shelter has their needs met, including access to food, transportation, medical care, and education. Before today, the Guard had authorized a total of 300 members to assist at hotel sites across the state and at Joint Base Cape Cod. We're raising that number to 375, and the increase will help provide further assistance at hotel sites along with our legal clinic scheduled for next week to connect people to work opportunities. And in order to make sure everyone in our shelter has access to this work authorization clinic, we're going to expand these services uh, beyond next week to schedule another clinic the week of November 27th after Thanksgiving. Second, the governor has stressed the critical need for speeding up workforce authorizations to help migrants support their families and exit the shelter system. Shelter residents want to work. Our businesses want to employ them. I'm glad to report that Labor and Workforce Development Secretary Lauren Jones and her team at MassHire have made great progress in this front. In the last few weeks, nearly 300 people in our shelter system have enrolled in MassHire and participated in work readiness services and workshops. Many have already been connected with employers. MassHire has also identified companies with a dozen dozens of open job orders that can hire new arrivals and get them to work. I'll get into some examples to showcase some of these successes. Mass Hire North Central has set up a tour of Catania Oils, a food oil plant in air, in hopes to hire work authorized individuals. Mass Hire North Central also worked with Mount uh, Wachusett, community college to set up new ESL classes and more than 30 shelter residents attending. Mass Hire on the North Shore recently held career workshops for over 120 people. On the South Shore, Mass Hire connected people to employment at Dunkin' Donuts, Market Baskets, Walmarts, and Cisco Food Distributors. The Mass Hire Franklin Hampshire Career Center placed employees at Yankee Candle and Cooley Dickinson Hospital in Northampton. As, these, as more people are assessed and achieve work authorizations, Mass Hire will connect them with employers looking for hiring skilled labor or enrolling them in ESOL and other training programs. In our partnerships with 
Commonwealth Corporation Foundation, individuals who are pending work authorizations will be matched with businesses to offer on-the-job training experiences. Our incredible Massachusetts employers, if you are interested in working with us and can hire or train individuals with limited English, please contact uh, them at this email address, lwdbusinessinfo at mass.gov. That's lwdbusinessinfo at mass.gov. Third, our teams are also prepared to support families who may end up on the waiting list in a variety of ways. Family Welcome Centers in Alston and Quincy will continue to offer services including providing hot meals, diapers, warm clothes, masks, and hygiene kits. Working with families on a case-by-case -case basis to determine safe housing alternatives. Making plans to host evening and weekend events offering services like dental screening, religious services, English courses, and more. Connecting them with other community-based services and behavior health supporters. I want to personally thank our fam family welcome centers, nonprofit organizations, and all those volunteers who have stepped up in this time of great need. We could not do this without them and, and all of us working together. The Governor's Executive Office of Health and Human Services, led by Secretary Walsh, will also continue to work to connect homeless families with immediate support. That work includes helping them access food assistance programs, mental health resources, including training for frontline staff, and, and DPH will be issuing new guidance for hospitals working with families experiencing homelessness. And lastly, we know the winter is coming, and we share deeply the concern about families being left out in the cold. That's why I'm here to announce new steps we're taking to ensure safety and well-being of families. With a critical need for a safety net top of, uh, on the top of our mind, we are announcing that we are partnering with the United Way of Massachusetts Bay to provide $5 million dollars to create a program with grant funding for community-based organizations, faith-based groups, and community partners to operationalize short-term overnight shelter for families with no alternative option. In fact, we have uh, Bob Giannino, uh, who's CEO of the United Way here with us uh, today uh, as part of the program. The program will be administered by the United Way and will provide eligible families and pregnant individuals on the wait list without a safe sleeping arrangement. Once the grant application is up later this week, we hope that community-based organizations will take deep advantage of this financial assistance available to them to offer temporary shelter uh, for our shelter system. And of course, as the state puts these new supports in place, we continue to ask the federal government to act to address the federal issues, to include the need for large-scale overflow sites for families. In closing, my top priority first and foremost will always be the safety and well-being of families and the people of Massachusetts and all of us together to meet this challenge of working on this situation in the future. I now open it up. Good question. When working with the United Way, I think it will go a long way. Uh, it will, you know, be implemented by the United Way, and it will be focused on helping uh, individuals for short term, for so for shelters. I don't know, and so as we develop the program, we'll get into that more, and we can get back to you with more information. This is this is federal dollars that we're using. That that is is just as far as I know, it's a federal program that we've moved money into this uh, to help with this with the United Way for the grants. Is there a script that's being given to providers besides you're going to go on a wait list? 
Yes, there's a there's information we'll give them about what the community partners are doing, the United Way, uh, you know, program that we're implementing, and and details like that. And then the immediate need too of supplies that they need, as I talked about, uh, things like you know, uh, food and 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 diapers and whatnot. Well, we're providing them with, uh, you know, a list of uh, opportunities, uh, uh, advocacy groups, and in particular, you know, back to the United Way and how they're working with uh, the, you know, community partners to implement this program. But in connection, you're connected to this problem, so you see it most closely. You probably have best answer to the question, what will these people end up doing? Will they be on the, would they likely be on the street? Would they likely be in unsafe situations that would be considered? Where will these people go from your experience? So we've had we've we have a number of community partners that are that are really stepping up at this time to join with us that this is this is not just a state problem uh, for a state funding and state program it's all of us together are getting after this and I see. So are you saying someone's going to be able to help them or whether there are there are we we will put them on the waiting list for our system and then they will be uh, getting help from our community partners to include you know the program. So you Well, we do have a. Where will these people be? Well, well, I we have a number of community partners that are stepping up now in in the in the short term and as we move into the United Way program. But General, we've seen people have to take up shelter at Logan. We've seen people take up shelter in emergency rooms. Is that what's going to happen now? Uh, frankly, what I'm thinking and I'm hoping and I'm looking towards is is we have positive indication that we have a lot of community partners that will help us with this. Yes. Last question. How many low are you expecting will be created through this grant program? And then the state separately setting up mass overflow sites. Uh, I say that a question How again. How many overflow sites are you expected that will be created through this grant program? And then the state separately setting up overflow sites. I don't know how many. And that, frankly, is up to the United Way. And I defer to the United Way as they find partners, and it takes both sides. The community steps up and asks United Way for, you know, to help with a grant. So that's the moving part. So I really appreciate it, and I thank you very much. That was the last question. And, and I, really, I really appreciate it. Thank you.